Now let's take a look at the field of view and the clipping planes for our camera. Now the field of view allows us to control the angle of our lens, which is a lot like controlling the zoom on a real world camera. Correct. Basically, it gives you how much of the world that you can see inside of your um, scene mm -hmm. at any given time from your camera. That's right. A larger number is going to show you more of the world, where a lower number will show you less. Now, the thing is, is your numbers go up and you seem to be seeing more of the world. Everything seems to get pushed further away from you. That's right. Now, we can actually demonstrate that. Here inside the field of view, as I drag this slider around, you can check inside the camera preview and see we start to get that kind of walleye, wide-angle lens effect. So let's crank this up to something around 100 degrees. And if we hit play, you can see we get this really wide-angle look. And it actually makes us look like we're moving a little faster. In fact, that is a nice trick of cameras. If you're doing something uh, like a racing game or trying to make a, a game where you have to run really quick, it is nice to be able to open up your field of view, and it will enhance the overall sense right. of speed. It almost gives you like tunnel vision feel to it. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you change it and you lower your field of view. In fact, let's see if we could do that uh, while we're just sitting here. So I'm going to hit uh, Control shift p and pause the view. We'll switch back over to the game mode, or game view, excuse me. And now we can pull our field of view down. And you can see it's just like zooming a camera. Right. What it's doing is it's narrowing your overall field of well, What happened? Oh, you hit play. I hit, I hit play. So let's go ahead and just do that, and then I'll, I'll play again. All right. So what you're seeing now is almost like you're zooming into the level. Everything is much closer. But as you try to walk, everything seems to be moving slower. That's right. And anybody who's ever tried to play a first-person shooter game and has tried to run around while looking through the scope on your sniper rifle knows exactly what this is all about. Uh, it does make things feel slower. It also makes your whole level feel a lot flatter because you lose a lot of that depth when you uh, close down your angle of view like that. Now, next to down from this, we have our clipping planes. I'm going to set this back to its default value, which I believe was around 60. Now, clipping planes do what exactly, Lee? Well, they determine how close to the camera or how far away from the camera objects can be before they get clipped. Mm -hmm. If you're with inside the near clip plane of your camera, your camera will not draw what any object that's with inside that clip plane. That's right. Now, technically what they're doing is controlling the extent of the view frustum. And the frustum is this great big pyramidal shape that we see jumping out of our first person controller, right. out of our camera right now. And if you were to adjust the near clip plane to say 10, you'll see that now we've actually got a rectangle, a rectangle at the front of this pyramid. That means everything that's with um, it, between that rectangle and yourself is not being drawn. If you look in the camera preview, you can see that part of the world has been clipped away. As a matter of fact, we could just hit play and we could prove that. So all the stuff that is close to us, we can't see anymore, which right. is kind of scary. And it, this is actually kind of useful to help um, prevent you from looking through objects when you get too close to them. Right. You can adjust that near clip plane. Now I'm going to put this back to 0.3, and let's take our far clip plane, and I'll pull this back to a value of, I don't know, let's say about 15. Now you can see our frustum has got a lot closer to us now, and it actually allows us to see something else. We have handles on our frustum that we can use to control the angle of our lens, our field of view. I just wanted to point those out because if your frustum is set to the default of 1,000 units away, it's not as easy to make these out. But once you got them, they are kind of cool to play with. Right. Now, with near clip planes and far clip planes, they can be used to help call out geometry to help speed up your level. They also have another use that's not quite as apparent, and that is if you set your near clip plane, you go, well, you know, why don't I just make it zero? Mm -hmm. And why don't I make my far clip plane 10,000 or something? What ends up happening is if you have objects in your scene that are really close to each other, let's say you have a picture frame that has a picture on it. And they're and two it, separate objects. And it's a separate object, and it's laying right on top of a wall. As that gets farther away from the camera, if your near clip plane and far clip plane are um, so far apart, 
the camera cannot differentiate near enough what surface it should draw on top of the other. That's right, because when you have such a wide spread from where you begin your calculation, being the near clip plane, and where you end the calculation, being the far clip plane, you need a much higher degree of precision to figure out what to draw in front of other things. This can lead to object flickering for objects that are really close to each other. And this is actually something you'll see in a lot more than just Unity. Uh, I've seen that uh, exact same thing take place in Maya if you set your far clip plane far, you know, too far away. So it's a common thing with uh, rendering in computers. Correct. Now, uh, with all of that said, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this video, just to give you an idea of your field of view and your near and far clip planes. Now, the use of the clip planes is something we're going to take a look at when we get to the multi-camera setup here in just a little bit. I'll show you how you can take one camera and have a very close far clip plane on it. I know it sounds funny to say that, a close <laughs> far clip plane. But we'll use one camera that can only see to maybe about 20 yards ahead of us. And then another camera that begins at 20 yards and allows us to see everything else out in the distance and how we can differentiate the data that is visible from one camera to the next. And again, that's something we'll take a look at a little bit later, but clipping planes will be vital to setting up something like that. In the meantime, that will wrap things up for this video. Thank you very much for watching.